Thanks for dropping in. In this video, I plug in a network cable, I plug in the other end of a network cable, and I get an error message. In a recent eBay job lot, I got this Seagate Central 2TB NAS. So as I have been backing up on USB drives up until now, I thought that if I could get it working, it may be a nice little backup solution. It came with no instructions, but a quick look on the back shows only three sockets. One for power, an RJ45 network port, and a USB port. The power is to provide a 12 volt, 2 amp power supply. The RJ45 is to connect the Seagate Central to a router, and the USB port is to allow a USB storage device to be plugged in to expand or allow access to the device via the NAS. I had to look that one up, as I thought it might just be to update firmware or for management, but that is not the case. So I plugged the power and network cable into the Seagate Central NAS and the other end of the network cable into a free port on my router. Now the Seagate Central is from around 2014, so 10 years old now. Originally there was the option to access it remotely via the net via a third party provider. This access was discontinued in 2018, so it's now defaulted back to being a locally accessed NAS which is good for me, as this is exactly what I want. So after waiting a few minutes for the NAS to complete its boot cycle, I had a look at my Windows 10 PC, and the Seagate NAS showed up in the network section. All good so far. However, when I tried to access the NAS, an error box appeared stating Windows cannot access backslash backslash Seagate NAS, check the spelling of the name. Otherwise, there might be a problem with your network. To try to identify and resolve network problems, click diagnose. Not the most useful of messages, but on the plus side, at least Windows has got a little politer since the 95-98 days when a system hang and a forced hard reboot would give you a scan disk message assuming you had just reset the PC by choice and telling you to shut down properly in the future. Sheesh. But in this instance, I followed the instructions and clicked diagnose. After waiting a bit for the troubleshooter to run, I was politely informed that the troubleshooter couldn't identify the problem. Wonderful. So by right clicking on the NAS, and selecting properties, I can see the assigned IP address, in this case 192.168.0.41. I can then bring up the run command and try to access the NAS directly by typing backslash backslash 192.168.0.41. This again fails, but it does give me a little bit more useful information. You can't connect to the file share because it is not secure. This share requires the obsolete SMB1 protocol which is unsafe and could expose your system to attack. Your system requires SMB2 or higher. For more information on resolving this issue see and then there is a link. Now as I understand it, SMB stands for Server Message Block. The now unsupported Seagate Central NAS uses the old SMB1 protocol and was never updated to use the newer, more secure SMB2 protocol. Windows 10 64-bit by default disables SMB1, I guess due to the security concerns, although from my experience, it appears to be on by default in the 32-bit Windows 10 for whatever reason. As long as you are happy with the security risk of having SMB1 active, then it can still be turned on in Windows 10. Back to the search bar, and by typing Windows Features, we have the option for Turn Windows Features On or Off. By selecting this and scrolling down, we have the SMB1 file sharing support option. This is currently not selected. So by placing a tick in the box to the left, we can activate it. A bit of installation later, and we are told that it has completed the requested changes and that a restart is required. So, after a restart, back in Windows Explorer, Again in the network section, we can see the Seagate Central NAS, and this time, we can also actually access it. So I now have a NAS for my backup. Sure, it is no longer supported, and the remote access no longer works, which from a security point of view is probably a good thing. I did go into the NAS settings and disable all remote access options as well, to be sure, but as I will generally not have this NAS on, and only turn it on once in a while when I want to back something up, I'm not too concerned. We have had to turn SMB1 on the computer, which does have a security concern, however. I hope you liked this video. Do you have a NAS backup option? If so, which one? Please like and subscribe if you found this useful, and leave a comment below, and I'll see you again soon.